Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our exclusive Global Leading Voices webinar campaign. We are delighted to have you join us here today. Please be informed that if you have any questions during the presentation, you may type them into the question box in your control panel. The presenter will answer your questions at the end of the presentation accordingly. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to our presenter, who will begin shortly. Welcome everybody to this webinar on how to effectively deal with stress in project management. I am really happy that you've taken time out to listen to this recording, whether it's live or whether you're listening to it afterwards, because it is a very important topic. And it is a topic which is very close to my own heart, because I have had a fair amount of stress as a project manager and I almost faced burnout. But I know that it is not just myself who've experienced this. Today I coach and I train a lot of project managers and it's just a topic that keeps cropping up. And it is a problem because stress has, if, if we are under you know, prolonged stress, it has a negative effect on our health, on us physically, and obviously, you know, our health is very important. But the other effect of stress, which probably we don't think of so much, is that it has a real effect on our mental abilities. And that means that we become less effective, uh, less able to make effective decisions on our projects. So if we suffer from severe stress as project managers, there is a high likelihood that we are not able to manage our projects in the best possible way. So, in this webinar, we will look at that. I will share my own story and what I did to overcome stress. We will look at what negative stress really means, how you can begin to overcome it. And then at the end, there will be opportunities to ask questions. I will probably speak for about 45 minutes or thereabouts, and then we will open up for some questions. Now, let me tell you a little bit about myself and why I am running this webinar on stress management in the first place. Um, normally, I actually talk a lot about project leadership, and that's what I've been focused on for quite a while. For the last six years, I have been um, coaching and training project managers full time. And a big part of that work is project leadership. And a lot of what we do in project management is to get better at what we do. We want to work more effectively. We want to deliver our projects within time, within scope. We want to deliver the benefits. We want to motivate our teams. We want to do more with less, and we want to add as much value as we can to our clients. Of course, that is why we're here. That is what project management is all about. But what's interesting is that if we give it our all and more than we have, more energy than we really have, we can very easily run into um, a risk of burnout. And for that reason, I will say that stress is really the, the shadow side of project management. We each have a responsibility to ourselves and to our teams to make sure that we stay on the healthy side of stress because it serves no one to completely go down with a flag and burn out. Um, and I will um, now take you back to 2008 when something significant happened in my own project management career. Up until that point, I would say that I'd been managing fairly large projects. I was working in finance. I was a consultant for, for a while, and then I joined a, a bank. And in 2006 to 2008, I was running the bank's biggest project. We had a very important business case. Um, the day we delivered the project, we would save 150 million. If we didn't manage to deliver our project successfully, that entire business unit we were working for would have to close. So you can kind of imagine the kind of stress that was on my shoulders. And in addition, you know, I had a project sponsor who said to me, so Sam, relax, you're not going to get fired because I was a little bit tense. But, you know, there were three project managers before me who had been fired. So there were all these reasons why I actually felt a lot of pressure on my shoulders. And I would say up until that point, yeah, there had been stress as well. Stress doesn't build up just overnight. It builds up over a long period of time. Some of my symptoms were that I suffered from insomnia at some point. I would go to sleep okay, but then after about four hours, I would wake up. I was tired, but I really had difficulties going back to sleep. 
I would have difficulties um, with my digestive system. We call it IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And sometimes on a Friday night, I would come home and I would just cry. Not because there was anything visibly wrong. After all, my project was going very well. But I was simply exhausted. I had given everything on my project. There was nothing left. And so I, there was this emptiness. But what really made me wake up and see that I needed to do something different was that I began to have inflammation in my foot. And that meant that I had difficulties walking. And to walk with a stick when you're about, you know, mid thirties, that is just not cool. So I realized that I had to do something differently. And what was happening in my mind was that I thought, well, if you can't deal with the stress on your project, you can go and you can change your career. I didn't really see that I could just make a little course correction and make a little change and still continue to do what I was doing. Um, many of us tend to think black and white is either or, whereas in fact, there are many ways for us to adjust and adapt and continue to do all the good work we're doing with less stress. And that's really what this webinar is all about. My own road back to full health um, looks a little bit like this. I did a number of things. Um, really, I, I didn't want to, but I was, as I said, forced to stop and, and reconsider what I was doing. So first of all, I got much better at raising my hand and asking for help. It is not something that most of us are comfortable doing because as project managers, we like to know it all, potentially do it all. We think that we can manage it all and that, you know, stress is what happens to other people. And asking for help makes us sometimes feel a bit vulnerable or worst case scenarios make us look incapable of doing things ourselves. But if you run a big project like I did, it is um, necessary to ask for help. In my case, I got a project administrator to join my project and that made all the difference. Somebody who could track the detail, uh, work streams, who could do the project financial, who could maintain the document library, all that sort of stuff which was necessary, but it was not necessary that I did it. And it freed me up to do other things. And then I began to really look at my mental state. I began to um, notice what I was thinking. So I made a decision, for instance, that I wanted to leave the office at 6 p.m. You know, I thought that's a reasonable place to stay. I shouldn't work so late every night. And I decided that I didn't want to think about work once I left. So that was my intention. I set out meeting a friend in the evening. Um, I remember it. I was working in central London, walking down the escalators of St. Paul's underground station and in popped a thought about work. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to think about work. Put it away. Think about, you know, meeting your friend tonight. I continued down the escalator and up popped a thought again about work. And I was like, no, 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 I wasn't going to think about work. And this continued. And I realized that I had very little control over my thoughts. And that made me a little bit angry and stubborn. And I thought, hold on, this is not OK. It's my mind. I want to be able to control my thoughts. And it takes a little practice, but we can. And I could begin to uh, decide now I put work away. And now I focus on other things that are not work related. That was really a key, a key to begin to switch off. I personally was also on a mission to get more into my body because I lived a lot in my head and many of us do. We, we're too heavy in our heads. Uh, yoga was something that really helped me. Yoga has excellent breathing practices, it is excellent for actually being in the moment because you need to be mindful when you practice yoga. You can't do it whilst thinking about all your, all your issues. So this can be a different thing for each of us, but for me, that was what, what mattered. And, and I also began to pay more attention to what I was eating. And um, I began to fuel myself with more things that gave me energy. And I'm going to sh show you how to do that a little bit later. And for me personally, I took a mini sabbatical. This was in 2008. The financial crisis had just started and I thought it would be unwise to take many months off. So I took six weeks. I went traveling. But six weeks was enough for me to actually be able to stop and Really, when you stop, you see connections that you haven't seen before and 
you give your body a chance to recover as well, which was very, very important for myself. And out of all this came something very good because I actually became much more interested in coaching and in looking at how I could course correct what I was doing. I didn't leave project management. I am still in project management, but I changed my angle. For me, the answer was, of course, to begin to notice my thoughts, do more of what gives me energy, get more into my body, but also to work with other people in a different way. And that's what I've been doing for the last six years. Now I coach and I train full-time but I'm absolutely still in project management I didn't give that up I would like you now to consider what causes you stress because if you would like to get better at handling stress and avoiding burnout you need to begin to become aware of how you do react to stress so I have a number of questions that can help you to assess your own stress response and first of all, I would like you to think of a recent situation that has been stressful to you. If there's been something on your project that was stressful, that could be that, that event, or it could be something outside of work. Just think of something recently that was stressful to you. And if you have pen and paper in front of you, you can write it down. I would like you also to write down what you were thinking in that moment. When you felt stressed, what were you thinking? Just write down whatever comes to your mind. What uh, and how were you feeling? I'm sure we all know the impact on our feelings when you experience this stressful event. What did you say to yourself? What we say to ourselves really reveals some of our thinking patterns. Did you say, oh, I'm no good? Did you say, this is terrible? Did you say, I can't cope with this? What did you say to yourself? What was the physical effect on your body? And what was the effect on people around you? Did this have a positive effect on people on your project? Or in your family, if it was a private event? Or did it have a negative effect? It is rarely pleasant for other people to experience someone who is, stress, who is stressed out. And the last question, if you were your own coach, what would you say to yourself? What advice would you give to yourself? Now you can take a screenshot of this uh, slide and come back to it in your own time and really consider, really go into your, what your stress response looks like. You can also keep in mind this stressful situation during the rest of this webinar and see what tips and techniques you can pick up to help you overcome that particular situation so that you feel less stressed about it next time. I would also like you to consider where you are on this stress curve. As you can see, we have job pressure or the amount of stress you experience on the horizontal axis and on the vertical axis, we've got your level of effectiveness or job performance. What you can see from this graph is that we actually do need some stress in order to perform. Some people recently said to me, I, I just tend to work really well under pressure. And this is definitely true for quite a few people. And that is true. We do need some pressure to perform. You know, if you wake up in the morning, nobody needs you. There is no project for you at the moment. All the nice projects is going to your colleague. Well, honestly, that just is not very satisfactory and it doesn't make you perform very well. You may even end up in what we call rust out here on the left hand side of the graph. We feel that our skills aren't improving, that we're not learning, and we begin to forget our knowledge. When there is enough pressure on you, when your manager and your clients want you to perform your best work and they support you in doing that, you will move into your zone of peak performance. And that's really where we want to be. That's the optimum. However, if there is a continuous amount of pressure on you, if there is too much stress, you might move towards the right-hand side and face burnout. And that is essentially what we are 
trying to avoid, and that's what we're talking about in this webinar, it is that right-hand side of the curve which is so dangerous and it comes maybe not from short bursts of stress but from prolonged stress. And I would define negative stress in this way. It is a situation where the demands on you exceed your resources and your ability to cope. And that is actually a very subjective experience. You can have two people experiencing the same event. One person is going to find it stressful and the other person is not. So it is something to do with how we feel. Negative stress happens if you feel that you can't cope with the pressure. Perhaps your neighbor can cope, but you cannot cope. So it is a very subjective thing. It's also worth looking at what happens physically. This will help us understand how to deal with it. And it will help us understand the negative consequences. You are probably well aware that stress hormones get released in you when you feel stressed. It is adrenaline and cortisol. So the moment you feel stressed, something, let's imagine you see danger. You know, you have this uh, fire, this fire in your building. What happens is that your brain will go into the middle part. So very, very roughly speaking, our brain has three parts to it. The middle part, the front part, sorry, the very front part is the frontal lobe. That is the neocortex. This is where your logic resides. This is where you want to be most of the time as you are managing and leading your project. That's where you make the best decisions. That's where you're clear headed. The back part of your brain is the ancient part of the brain. It's the reptilian part. This is where the automatic responses sit, your heartbeat and your breathing. And the middle part of your brain has a little piece called the amygdala. And the amygdala is involved when we, you know, see this fire in the building. Essentially, what happens is that you decide, am I going to run or am I going to fight or am I just going to, you know, freeze? That's great, because if you really do experience a fire or some predator, a you know, big lion, yes, you want to decide very quickly, am I going to run or am I going to fight it? So that works really well for short bursts of stress. That's what we are built for. But the problem happens if we experience this every single day. If the fire is just a fire on your project, if the lion is your manager or your your stakeholder. Every single day you get into the office and you're kind of ready to put out these fires. You're ready to go through these hundreds of emails. You're ready for whatever um, problems, technical problems might come up on your project or you're bracing yourself for the impact of your negative client or whatever it is. If that happens to you, it means that you're constantly in the stress response. It means that you will constantly be sitting in that middle part of your brain and actually studies have showed that your IQ can drop by about 20 points. That is quite significant. It means that instead of being in the front part of your brain where you can make effective decisions, because you're, you're stressed and your body is responding in a stressed way with adrenaline and cortisol, you are actually less able to make effective decisions because physically you are in the middle part of your brain now. You are, you are in a different part. There's nobody home in, in, you know, in, in front. So that is a big problem, and, and scientists even say that the majority of our physical diseases actually stem from stress. Lots of working days um, are lost due to stress, so there are lots of reasons why we need to get away from this state. There are some warning signs, and uh, you see here the cognitive symptoms, emotional symptoms. I would like you to just look at which ones are true for you. We all experience stress dif uh, differently. And I think the problem is that even if you experience some of these symptoms, you might say to yourself, yeah, but um, it's fine, it will pass, or this is normal, but this is not normal. I have a very good friend of mine who years ago, her brother went down with stress. And we were talking at length about how come, because she was really frequently in touch with her brother, how come she hadn't seen it? Now, you know what happened two years later? Two years after this incident, where my friend had helped her brother overcome stress, the exact same thing happened to her. She went to the doctor because 
she she didn't feel so well and for months she'd been having a fever but she was telling herself that it would probably pass so we are very good at um telling ourselves stories and at um you know coming up with excuses for why we shouldn't do something about the state that we're in here i've, I've flipped the screen to uh, some more symptoms some physical symptoms and behavioral symptoms as i told you my own symptoms were uh, you know insomnia poor digestion inflammation and and just really feeling quite low at, at the end of the week um, the first step for you is to be honest with yourself and begin to uh, really recognize some of these uh, stress symptoms if you're not in touch with your body you probably are not going to feel this so be honest um, do some kind of sport sit still so you begin to notice your body and tune into the um, what your body is actually communicating to you now I would like to share um, a very powerful story with you it's 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 sad but it's also powerful because Peter actually um, experienced a lot of stress but he was able to overcome it this is a, a real story of a chap who I've been um, he's been attending a leadership um, program that I've been running recently in the construction industry and um, years ago Peter was running a uh, project in the rail industry and it was quite a demanding uh, project he um, realized that it was going to be tough for him to deliver so he went to his line manager and his business unit manager and he asked for some help nothing was really happening so he just plowed ahead on his own but after nine months he collapsed at work with chest pain and he was rushed to hospital uh, he actually he ended up in cardiac uh, high care unit at his local hospital and he uh, was diagnosed with a condition where fluid accumulates around your heart he was told by the doctors that this condition could be deadly if it didn't change anything and he was also told that it was stress related now this of course was a major wake up call not just for Peter but also for his employer his employer began to um, uh, do health checks of their employees and they also began to roll out some stress management courses so that the employees could begin to notice their stress symptoms Peter himself made a number of changes he um, began to uh, exercise more he began to spend more time on the things that were important in his life such as his friends and his family and very importantly he began to um, get better at switching off from work so when he drove home and he saw the last set of traffic lights he would decide that this is where work ends and this is where home life begins when uh, he goes on holiday he would leave his uh, laptop at home and in the weekends he would leave it in the boot of his car and also a thing that I think we can all learn from Peter stopped responding to email between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. and we know that this has worked because this story is actually 12 years ago and Peter is still sticking to the same rules and today he manages projects and programs that are way bigger and way more complex than 12 years ago yet stress doesn't get to him he has learned to switch off he has learned to focus on what's important to him outside of work and I think it's such an important lesson for all of us now looking at the things that might be stressing you out of work I'm sure that we uh, won't be short of um, topics to talk about you know we have tons of work we have tons of emails too little time and and in this day and age there may also be no job security um, there may be reorganizations at work there may be technical issues for you to deal with etc 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 but it can be very easy for us to blame something external for sure there are triggers outside of us that uh, can cause us stress but the real stuff actually is our psychology and that's what we really need to understand because in addition to these external stressful factors you know let's look at who we are as people many project managers like to be in control they like to know it all and do it all and it's almost like some of us feel this gratification and and 
when we put out fires, when we, you know, have have spent a day at work sorting out issues and dealing with conflict, and we overcame it all, and you know, we somehow justify our roles. What is this superhero mentality that many people have? It's definitely not helping us to combat stress. And another thing that I notice a lot is what what we would call imposter syndrome. It is this feeling that I'm not good enough. I'm going to be found out. I, you know, I don't have enough experience to do my job. I'm too young or I'm too old or I really shouldn't be here or whatever we can say to ourselves because we somehow have a lack of self-esteem. We somehow have a lack of self-love. And so we feel that we need to do more to prove ourselves. We need to work extra to prove ourselves. And it's, again, it is adding to that mentality of overdoing it, of not allowing ourselves to breathe and, and to take a break. So these psychological factors, I think, are much more important uh, than the external factors. And that's really what we need to work with. So in another sense, what I'm trying to say is that stress is not the result of the external situations. It's a result of the thoughts that you're having. And you know what? You don't have to believe your thoughts. So if you are being asked to give a presentation tomorrow on your project, uh, impromptu, without, with very little, um, let's say, um, preparation, most people would be extremely stressed because public speaking is the number one fear on, on most people. So you could say that it's the fact that you have to give a presentation tomorrow that is stressing you out. But what are you saying to yourself? What, what are the thoughts that are going through your head? Are you telling yourself it's going to be a disaster? Are you telling yourself that I'm no good at public speaking? Of course, if you have those thoughts, it's going to stress you out. So uh, the trick here is to, to trace back your thoughts, become more conscious of your thoughts and begin to actually question those thoughts. You don't have to believe them. And it's, it's really an aha moment when you, when you realize it. you don't have to believe your thoughts. Another way of illustrating it is in, in, in this simple three-step way. You have an external event, then you have an internal response. So your internal response is your thinking patterns and how you feel about something. And then you have the outcome. The outcome is what you say, what you do, and how you react. When you feel that something is stressing you out, the best thing you can do in that moment is to pause. I know it sounds counterintuitive because if your client is telling you that he wants something right here and right now, you might just go into your stress response and you might work harder and you might just try to get it done. But if you would just invest a couple of minutes to just be still, breathe deeply, because that's really one of the keys to combating stress. Just breathing deeply, you reoxygenate your body. You know, when you get tense, we tend to not breathe as deeply. You go into this really tense state. And there is a big link between your physiology and your psychology. So if you can change your biology, if you can change your physical response by relaxing, by thinking clearly, by breathing and oxygenating, you can make sure that you don't go to that middle part of your brain where you trigger a stress response. You can actually, by pure will, make sure that you stay calm and that you stay focused. And that actually creates what some people say, the biology of courage. So you consciously go in to this task you've been given with a biology of courage instead of, instead of a, 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 stressed, a stress response. I mentioned a little while ago that there are some thinking errors that we are guilty of, some of us, <clears throat> and those thinking errors can actually cause us stress. I um, have highlighted here on the slide some of those thinking errors, um, and they're really worth paying attention to. If you find that you're saying to yourself, I must do this, I must finish this by the end of today, or I, I, I should get this done, I can't possibly do this, I should know this by now. You know, that's something that is an underlying factor 
for stress. Thinking in black and white, something that has to be 100% perfect. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to be a perfectionist because um, there is a certain standard and we have to reach the standard. And even as a perfectionist, if it has to be 100% perfect, we might even be less willing to delegate. So that's, that's a dangerous one. Attaching negative labels, you know, I'm not as clever as everybody else, I'm not as experienced, I'm not good enough, I shouldn't be here, blah, blah, blah. It's the same old record that some people keep playing. I'm not saying it's necessarily easy to change it, but it is possible to change it. Predicting negative future events and catastrophizing, blowing things out of proportion, it's terrible, you know, I'll be fired. Um, begin to notice these thinking errors and question them. Yeah, just challenge yourself. Is that really true? Is that really so? Let's look at some ways in which we can now really begin to um, deal with stress and get to the root cause of stress once and for all in the same way as Peter did. There are many different types of responses and many more that I'm actually able to go through in this webinar, but I've picked out the ones that I feel are most important. The first one is that as project managers, I think it's fair to say that we all have a responsibility for using project management tools and techniques and processes appropriately. Because we actually have a lot of the answers for how to create great projects, how to estimate effectively, how to create good project plans, how to create realistic resourcing plans. We can use risk management to help us foresee negative events. We can put in buffer. We can do so many things with contingency and proper planning, yet many projects still are planned unrealistically. With, if we set out with an unrealistic deadline and we all know that we're not going to reach this, I mean, do you think that's going to, you know, what do you think the effect is going to be on the team? I know that you know what the effect will be on the team because already they feel stressed from day one because they know they're not going to make it. So I think is, you know, we have to take joint responsibility. Each person and those people who authorize projects for actually making sure that we set ourselves up from for success. And another great thing we can do in our projects is to make sure we set ground rules, make sure we agree our expectations. I see so many teams and they spend time only talking about what we need to deliver. They actually don't spend time talking about what we expect from each other. Roles and responsibilities um, is sometimes clear, not always. But what is oftentimes never clear is how we expect each other to behave. And especially around um, personal boundaries and stress, I think it's very interesting. On your project, for instance, if you get an email at 8 p.m., is it expected that you answer it? If you have out of office um, project meetings because you're working with different time zones, is it expected that you attend these meetings? What is accepted behavior on your project and what is not accepted behavior? Is it accepted or expected that you work weekends, for instance? This is what I mean by agreeing expectations. And, and um, it's really about understanding the culture of your project. And I would say it's about changing the culture because we, if we want to combat stress, we've got to create a culture where it is accepted for team members to say, you know what, I, I don't want to work on weekends. Yes, of course, if there is a, um, a project deadline once a year, I'm okay to work, you know, up and up until that deadline, maybe two weeks before, it's okay. But it shouldn't be the norm. You know, exceptions always happen, but it shouldn't be the norm. And when I say that we need to change the culture, I also think that we need to change the culture so that it is okay for people to express how they feel, express their concerns about work-life balance, and, and to show vulnerability and to raise my hand and say, you know, this is too much for me. Because we all have different personal boundaries and we all reach those boundaries at different times. So the project manager cannot necessarily guess where that boundary lies for each person. So we also have a responsibility, each of us, 
to talk about it and to make this a bit more explicit. I um, recently gave a talk to the Association for Project Management on Stress and someone in the audience put his hand up and said, you know what, on, on my project, we actually have weekly um, huddles where we talk about what has stressed us out this week. And he said, you know, we tend to call them the weekly cuddles. And I thought it was such a great little story because perhaps in some organizations, the culture is beginning to change where, you know, it is okay to share how we feel and I can only encourage that. As much as we need to make changes on our projects, each person also need to take responsibility and to set personal boundaries. As I said, we all have different boundaries, so it's important that we each look inwards because no one can answer this question for you. Only each person can. What is okay for you and what is not okay for you? You know, how many days a week do you want to work late? None? One? Two? What is okay for you? What is exceptional behavior for you? Like, is it okay for you to work late once every month or you know, I think we each have to come to terms with what is okay and what is not, not okay for us. What about taking work home? What about taking a proper lunch break? And of course, there are cultural differences here too. If you uh, work in England, uh, this is where I'm based, I'm in London, you will often see people um, go out for a sandwich at lunchtime, take the sandwich back and eat whilst they're sitting in front of the desk, meaning that they don't get a lunch break at all. Whereas if you work in France, you know, and, and, and I think some other cultures as well, you take a proper lunch break. You actually sit together with people, you socialize, you get away from your desk, and you do not talk about work during that lunch break. So perhaps we can learn a lot from the French, you know. It doesn't have to be during lunch maybe, but at some point we need a break and we need to get away. Get up, walk around the block, or do something which just changes your, your outlook. And um, I also think we each need to take responsibility for expressing uh, what we're experiencing. Speak up when you have reached those limits because other people cannot necessarily see it or, or guess where, where you're at. Learning to say no, I think, also has a place in all of this. Now, I am a um, very diligent person, I would say. I like to add value. I like to do the right thing. I like to um, deliver great work. So saying no is not necessarily easy. And I know it's not easy to many other project managers. So because, of course, we need to show that we are dedicated and that we are able and capable and all the rest of it. However, at some point, in some situations, it's important to articulate, you know, I cannot do A, but Perhaps I can do B, where B is less of, um, of a commitment. Or you can say, you know what, if somebody asks you about a scope change and you feel stressed about it, you know, let me think about it and get back to you. Or if your manager comes to you and asks you to do something urgent for tomorrow, you can say, um, well, I can do what you ask me, but then there is something else I will have to drop. So learning to say no in other ways is um, something that can serve you. Working smarter is also an action that we each can take on ourselves. I, again, work with many people who multitask and they never really get in their flow. Um, now there's um, a lot of focus on doing deep work and there's even a book out there called Deep Work, which I haven't yet read but I've heard um, a lot of good stuff about it, so it's on my reading list. And, and really, the way that we work best as people is these short bursts of deep work or flow. Perhaps it's 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and then we need a short break, and then we need to go into deep flow again, or sorry, deep work. And when we do deep work, it's important that we don't get interrupted because that breaks our flow. So you need to be aware of how much you multitask and preferably stop it. Uh, don't have email notifications pop up all the time. You know, your client will, can wait 30 minutes for you to answer an email. You do not have to sit on top of your email. Um, I work with leaders of great organizations who only check email three times a day. It is absolutely possible. Don't let email 
uh, dictate your your working day. And then I would say give up this superhero image. None of us are superheroes. We all need help. We cannot and should not do it all on our own. If if you have that mentality, you you're probably a micromanager, and that. Uh, can have a very negative effect, not just on your own health and your stress levels, but also on the team, because the team might feel very disempowered by working with somebody who feels they have to fix it all. So look inside, what is that drives you to have this image and, and, and begin to challenge, challenge it and find new ways. Putting things in perspective, I think, is something that uh, is helping me quite a lot if something comes up that makes me feel stressed, if I tend to exaggerate something, I think it's terrible, or, oh my God, I can say to myself, well, how awful is this? You know, and, and how much would it matter in 12 months? Nobody died. You know, if it's a question of something that didn't get done or um, you felt that somebody exploited you or sorry took advantage of you in a in a not in too big a way whatever it is that tends to stress us out uh, yeah how much will it matter in 12 months and then just let it go that's again challenging how you think about things change of physiology this is a big one because um your physical state is closely linked with your emotional state and with your psychology so if you sit at work and you are slouching, you are bending over in front of your computer and you're getting this email, which um, somehow has an, a negative effect on you, then the most important thing you can do is to change, change your physiology. Don't stay seated the way you do. Get up, breathe deeply, walk somewhere, go and take some fresh air, feel better in your body. When you feel better in your body, you will feel better psychologically. So that's really important to do in the moment. Over prolonged periods of stress, when you begin to feel more chronic stress, you know, exercising can really help you to combat that because when you are stressed every single day, you never really get to release and get those stress hormones out of your body. If there's a real fire or a real lion and you really get to run away, you actually you actually use your body and you'll be tired at the end. But the problem sitting in the office managing a stressful project is that you never really get to run and, and, and get those stress hormones out. So go to the gym or go for a run, exercise, whatever is right for you. Do something that gets your pulse levels up. Getting enough sleep. I mean, I'm not going to say much about it uh, other than it is incredibly important and many people um, come up with stories for why they don't have time to sleep. But the more sleep you get, the more resilient you will be. Eating healthily and avoid energy zapping foods. Well, some of the foods that are actually good that can help you to combat stress are stuff like um, berries and nuts and avocado, oily fish, bananas. And luckily for me, dark chocolate. Not chocolate with lots of sugar in, but really, you know, 80% dark chocolate without much sugar can do wonders. If you are really stressed or if you haven't slept a lot, you might go for the caffeine, you know, and, and the sugar. But that will actually um, make matters worse because if you eat very sugary foods or heavily processed foods, it's going to increase some of those same stress levels in your body. And that means you have much more, many more hormones to, to deal with. So it is a good idea to stay away from sugar, alcohol and excessive caffeine if you want to, uh, to combat stress. Now, an exercise which really mattered to me was something I picked up from a book years ago. It's a book called Energize by Joe Salter. I'm not even aware whether the book exists anymore. This is about 10 years ago. And she has a great little exercise in the book where you um, can write down everything that you do in a day, all the activities you tend to do in a day. And write down whether each activity drains you or energizes you. So include work activities as well as activities outside of work. And what you'll find is that if you have too many minuses and you don't have enough pluses, activities that energize you, 
it means that you are slowly depleting your energy levels and this has got nothing to do with how much food you eat the energy we're talking about here is a different kind of energy it's more like a uh, a spiritual kind of energy or whatever you want to call it it's it's um it's energy you get from doing things that you're passionate about so it's very important that you understand what your energy equation looks like for me i needed to do more stuff that gave me energy outside of my work so i began to uh, go more and do more art stuff or go more in nature i mean it's different for ev every person but it's not about the quality sorry the quantity of time you put in is about the quality of time so you might do something for 20 minutes every day that really fuels your passion and really gives you energy it could be that 20 minutes meditation is what you need to do i know people who walk with their dog in the morning and that just sets them up for you know really nicely or they go for a walk when they come home from work or they do something you know some people go and sit in a church or it's different for each each person but do something for you. You know what they say in, on, on airplanes? Put the gas mask on yourself before you fit it onto your child. You've got to look after yourself before you start worrying about other people. If you are stressed, your whole team will probably be stressed. I would also like you to take away this exercise um, and finish these sentences. Again, you can take a screenshot of, uh, of this slide. The sentences I would like you to finish are... I could ease the impact of stress in my life if I were to start. I could ease the impact of stress in my life if I were to stop. I will know that I manage my stress levels better when I. So please finish these sentences um, in your own time. Because the truth is, I think you have the answers inside of you. Maybe you're just not following your own advice. Yeah, and that's what's important. Meditation, yoga, guided relaxation techniques uh, is yet more tips that can help us to combat stress. There are lots of apps out there now. I know the Headspace is a very popular meditation app. There are many tools now that can help us. As I think the key is just to, to do something. You know, if you get something for this webinar, take maybe just two or three actions away of something simple that you can do on a daily basis, something small that you know you're going to do. You know, if you want to start going to the gym, it's, it's, it's a very bad idea to have an ambition to go seven times a week. Maybe just start by going once every fortnight. And that's really what I encourage you to do with, with these stress techniques. Just choose one or two or three things that you're going to do differently, small steps so that you can begin to build momentum. And um, what I would like to do um, right here at the end of the webinar before we open up for, for questions is to read you a, um, a little piece which um, hopefully will put you in a, in a nice and uh, relaxed state. I would like you now to think about a place where you can feel totally relaxed and absorbed. This could be that you are snuggled up on the sofa in the evening it could be that you are playing your favorite sports. It could be that you're walking in a forest or sitting on a beach. Choose whichever place is the best one for you. Choose a place or an activity where you can feel totally relaxed and absorbed. Thinking about that place or activity I invite you to have a look around. What do you see? Are there any colors? Can you touch anything? And can you hear any sounds? Perhaps you can smell something. Are you there on your own or are you there with other people. I would also like you to notice how you're feeling. Perhaps you are happy, excited, joyful, or maybe it's more a feeling of being relaxed and at peace. And just notice what your body feels like. 
I would like you to stay tuned into yourself and continue to be aware of your feelings and of your body. And I would like you just to be where you are, just to enjoy feeling really, really good. And just spend a few moments in this beautiful place, in this place where you can feel totally relaxed and totally absorbed. And now as we get ready to leave this place, know that you can take some of the memories and some of the warmth with you. And I also want you to know that you can always go back to this place in your imagination. This place is always within you, just as you are always within it. And now when you're ready, you can come back to your surroundings in the room where you're sitting and come back to this webinar. This was obviously just a very short reading, but it will give you hopefully an idea that there are lots of tools out there that can bring you into a peaceful place and that this place is always within you. The last step in overcoming stress, I think, is not so much about stress, but more about well-being. Because what we've talked about in this webinar is how to bring you to a place of no stress, but why not set the bar a little bit higher and go to a place where you really feel well-being? This is not the focus of this webinar, but I just want to sow the seeds for you that gratefulness, contribution, finding meaning uh, in the work you do and in, in the things you do is something you can begin to focus on in order to find more well-being. We actually get a lot of joy from contributing to others and from um, being generous towards others. So this is really just a appetizer for you to not just stop with overcoming stress, but to sow the seed for you to have an ambition to go into well-being as well. With that, we're going to um, finish the webinar, open up for some questions in a moment. I would encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn, and um, I look forward to hearing your questions in just a moment. Thank you, Suzanne, for delivering this very informative and I believe also for our attendees very helpful presentation. It was great to hear your experience. Uh, we want to inform the attendees that PCB provides training and certification services for ISO 21500 Introduction Foundation Lead Project Manager and Lead Assessor. A PCB certificate in these courses will exemplify your dedication in implementing and managing project management processes and frameworks, and most importantly, you will be recognized worldwide. Now, uh, we'll go ahead and take some time to answer some of the questions from the attendees regarding today's uh, very interesting topic. The first question is, how do you ensure that uh, stressful uh, situations in your personal life don't affect your work performance? Oh, I think that's a uh, lovely questions, a lovely question. I think it happens to all of us that we experience something in our private life and, you know, lots of things happen. The, the three most stressful things in life apparently is uh, buying a new home, <laughs> getting a divorce and getting a new job. So I guess two of those big ones, having a divorce and buying a new home, it can be <laughs> very stressful for people and or, or, or sickness. You know, there are many things that can affect us. Um, my first thing is, you can probably never really get get rid of it because you are an entire person, you're a complete person. And if you experience something very traumatic in your private life, I'm sure that um, it would be useful to share that with your work colleagues so that they have some compassion for what is happening to you. Having said that, there are things you can do to minimize the impact. Um, just as you, I explained that you can have a clear boundary when you leave work, no longer to think about work. 
you can also have a clear boundary and say when you enter work I give myself permission to have a little box and in that box I put my private worries these private worries will still be here when I leave work in eight hours and um, train your mind to really focus on work this is not going to be easy but that's my that's my best advice don't be hard on yourself have compassion with yourself because as I said you we are emotional beings and that's okay but if you want to minimize the impact then make you know have a box imagine a, a box where you put these worries in and try to pick them up only when you go back home in the evening Okay, uh, thank you, Suzanne. Uh, another question is, uh, the attendee is talking about the experience of Peter that you explained. Uh, what does switching off mean? Uh, no laptop or no work-related phone calls or no work-related conversations? Okay, thank you for that question. Um, switching off is, um, is a phrase we use uh, here to say that you... Um, that you take your mind off something and I think switching off can be different things for different people it can be a physical physical act of switching off your phone of switching off your computer so that you're not connected but there is a much broader way and understanding of the word too so you can switch off your work thoughts and I think this is really more what we're referring to I switch off my thoughts about work and I switch on my thoughts and my emotions about my home life so that that's that's what it means thank you Suzanne uh, again for this great presentation because of the time limitation we'll have to conclude the presentation uh, I also want to thank the attendees for attending today's webinar and I hope that they could learn something helpful uh, to manage their stressful situations uh, I would like to let you know that this webinar will be recorded and posted on our website as well as on our YouTube channel together with the slides of the presentation. For more information about uh, our upcoming or past webinars, please visit our website www.pcb.com. Thank you all and have a great day.